Hi, my name's Larry Cavanagh. I have uh, this uh, worn out old Tirana here, uh, which is affectionately known as Saggy Sarah. Um, it's an ex Holden dealer team car, one of the first of their XU ones, which has uh, done duties as a touring car, um, a rally car, won the 71 Australian Rally Championship, and uh, had a number of drivers. Been on with uh, Peter Jansen, uh, obviously Colin Bond in road racing and uh, as a uh, rally car. Uh, there's a number of other drivers, Tony Roberts, I believe, had a steer and, you know, the cast of thousands from the day. The car has just on 80,000 racing miles on it, not kilometres, guys, miles. Um, a lot of the componentry has come out of different HDT cars. The blower was changed 40 years ago, but it, it is the original manifold off of the Holden Dealer Team Beast rally cross car. And the, uh, uh, it's the one that Ian Tate built in 1971. They were never expecting parts to be lasting this long. The engine has been set back the same as the rally cross car. The, um, the engine mounts, uh, other parts off the car are from the rally cross car. It's funny that the thing sort of finished up in um, New South Wales for a, a short period of time, then came to South Australia in approximately 1984, yep. late 84, maybe early 85, and nobody really knew what the car was. It got fixed up. Um, it had several owners here. You do a lot of club sprints, that sort of stuff. And I went looking for an Aussie muscle car years ago, and I, uh, I wasn't fussed whether it was a an XU1 or whether it was a, a GT Falcon, and in fact I knocked back an XW GT. <laughs> Duh. Um, but I got the word on this car, and the day I went and looked at the car and said yes was the day Peter Brock got killed. Uh, so approximately four hours after it was announced on the radio, I was standing in front of this car with a logbook that confirmed it was the Holden Dealer Team rally car. Yeah. The idler pulley off the rally cross car sitting there and a letter from Peter, in fact, yeah. describing parts of the car. Yeah. So that was a bit surreal um, at the time, but okay, well, yes, we'll have it. Running gear wise, it's a 202. Um, runs about nine and a half to 10 pounds of boost. Uh, it's nothing high tech in the engine and um, runs a, an Aussie four speed and it's using a disc brake banjo diff out of a, what was originally an L34. The housing cracked and was changed to an SLR 5000. It runs a banjo diff which I've uh, unfortunately hurt on the last <laughs> run here. Not as quick as it once was but I'm enjoying it, getting it out enjoyed uncovering the history of the car and I think people enjoy the flame show that it puts out. Uh, it does kick out a couple. Yeah. One of the hardest jobs I had was to work out how do I present this car that's had so many drivers um, and also pay respect to the different owners that it's had. So I had uh, Colin, had the pleasure of having Colin Bond um, we come over, he was driving standards for supercars and I picked him up from Vern Schupin's house uh, in my old 56 Chevy and uh, I just brought him up home and so he spent about three hours, we are talking about this, he's going over it and knew exactly what, what it was and what they'd done. And he said, what, how are you going to paint it? Yeah. And I said, in reality, touring car for about two months. Yeah. Yeah. Then it became rally car. Yeah. And it did a lot of rally stuff. I mean, Jansen won a lot of rallies in it in Victoria. But you also get to this, this thing of, 
but everyone's changed it a little bit on the car. How do you best present the car for everybody? So when I was rubbing it down, I started to come across all these different paint jobs in different colours. And the roof, I started just going front to back with an orbital sander. And all these colours kept popping up randomly. And that's because the body's that stressed that you know you wouldn't have picked it that was actually not straight, but it, it's it's so stressed. And um, so I thought, well, it's legitimately been red and white, coolest paint scheme. I'll do it like that. Well, that was a guy called Bruce Watt. Bruce used to work for Harry and Norm Firth, and they um, uh, back in the day when Bruce got hold of the car, which was in around about 1978-ish, um, he painted it blue in a dealer team style paint job. And he ran it at Winton. I've got photos of the car in the blue. Um, and then he had budget rent -a car sponsorship, so it was orange and white in a dealer team style paint scheme. And uh, in between other colours, then the red and the white came onto it. So Ian Tate's son Michael found me a picture, a black and white ad for when this thing was for sale, identifying the car as yeah. the first XU1 built by the Holden dealer team. Yeah. As raced by, you know, Peter Brock, Colin Bond, you know, Christine Cole, yeah. etc. And uh, featuring, you know, supercharged motor. So just from a black and white photo, I mastered out and did it. I changed the design on the bonnet ever so slightly. That's adding my little part to the car. And um, just keeping little bits and pieces. Um, you know, when you have a look at the interior, you'll see, you'll see the old gauges, the old Smith's taco. There's a number of signatures on the dash and on the glove box lid. There's also a few signatures on the front panel there, notwithstanding Harry Firth and uh, Peter Jansen. Probably the most two significant guys associated with this car. And uh, so to me, the, the section on the roof was the way to go. What he changed it into the true sports sedan by engine setback. Um, clearly a popular guy with Harry and I thought, okay, the red and white paint, but I'll add the splash of the green, which was, as it's rally car, how it was done. So I've tried to sort of, a little bit of everything. The wing went on in 94, the bloke that I got it from, who actually turned out to be a distant cousin. Um, and, you know, the, the guy's done a great job setting it up. but you can match up so much, you can match up damage on the car to those photos. You know, quite a simple one. If you look at that headlight, the angle that's on, compared to the other one, and then you can see when Jansen's driving it, the, is there, and I found a photo where he's come over a jump and he's bent up all the front guard and, and that's exactly how it stayed. It's stayed bent, you, you, you sort of can't hide it. The DNA's in the paint and it was important never to strip it to bare metal. And there's never a day goes past really you don't find some new piece of info. You know, I recently got sent a photo of uh, this in 19, late 73 when Jansen was racing it, um, when it, it's in its turbocharged guise. So it did run with the turbo on it before it got the supercharger and uh, that was an engine built by Graham Ritter. So another history hookup, you know, Jansen. And it's a great black and white photo. And in the background, this big sign says Toronto the Great. Uh, it's just, just a cracker. So I'm just waiting to get a good high res image of that one. But every now and then there's just something that just shows up and you go, well, there you go. That, that proves it was at that spot at that time. And you can see that bent headlock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>